Hey traders, Roggy here. And in this update, we're going to talk about gold and we're going to do a little bit of a discussion about uh, copper. We're going to start off with copper. Now, these are two metals that are on two very different parts of the macroeconomic conversation. Copper is a metal that's going to benefit from what's happening in terms of strength and equities overall, uh, not just in the US, but, uh, but globally. And there's uh, an element to reflation with the copper trade. There's an element to economic optimism uh, post pandemic in the copper trade. There's just been a tremendous uptrend in this move. And, and I don't believe that it's done yet. In fact, uh, each of the preceding zones where we pull back into the wave, went blue on the grab candles, were just the precursor to, well, what I'm hoping for, which is another move to the upside. So I love this trade, but I, I'm realizing that a lot of traders who are potentially new to commodities trading might be really uh, intimidated. So let's talk about this last entry from where I got into where we are now, not even the target where we are now. And, and in that, that's about a $11,800 move in an initial margin requirement of $7,260. So let's talk about what this means. So this is the profit per contract, and this is how much you needed to control each contract. So if you're an options trader, you already know what that means. You know that if you buy an option, just talk a long call, and it's a $5 option, it's 500 US dollars to control that option. Now, in an option conversation that's straight up a long call, you can't risk more than that $500 per, per contract. But in futures, and this tends to scare a lot of people away, uh, you can technically lose more than what you put up in initial margin. And that usually scares the heck uh, out of traders and they avoid the futures market altogether. Well, we also have options on futures. Right. And that allows you to take advantage of this pullback in copper by buying calls in the support zone of the wave uh, back here, back here. You know, so so remember that there are numerous ways you can position size. Some metals like gold, when we get there in a moment, have not just a full size contract, but they also have a micro. It doesn't mean that you have, uh, you know, it doesn't mean that you can't risk more than you've put up. That's still something that can happen in futures, but you're also putting up less. Um, sure, stop losses can help, but if we gap through a stop, look, I don't want to uh, paint an unrealistic picture. Things can happen. You can buy puts in lieu of a stop. And oftentimes, if I'm in a more volatile market, I'll buy puts in lieu of a stop to help protect the downside in the early stages before I hit the first target in the contract. So those are things we can do to help alleviate the risk. But beyond that, you know, notice there aren't any major gaps in this copper chart. There aren't, there isn't really a lot of wacky action here. Yes, drama can happen, but drama usually happens in certain kinds of markets during certain kinds of times, meaning uh, natural gas during the uh, pre-winter months can be pretty volatile. Or if the EIA decides to change the heating degree days, there can be a tremendous amount of volatility. That's not a complete unknown in terms of the season that could happen, but it can happen, all right? Now, it might sound like I'm sort of talking you in and sort of out. I want you to know uh, both the pros and cons here. Uh, I don't believe futures are tremendously difficult to trade. I think the micro in a, the micro alternative in a lot of these contracts, there are micro currencies. There's micro now in the indices. Uh, there's micro Bitcoin. We're going to have a micro crude oil contract. There's already a micro gold. So as you're looking at the full size contract of gold, you might say, gosh, I would love to get long gold, but I'm not comfortable with the prospect of the risk that it presents. No problem. Go with the micro contract, which in this case is one tenth the size. So full size gold is a $9,900, almost 10K contract. The margin rate for the MGC is $990. Rather than $10 per point, 901 to 902, it's $1 per point. So you can see you can manage the risk with a contract size that's one tenth 
the size of the full soul size. And these contracts, both copper and gold, are really part of the macroeconomic environment that we're in right now, which I'm very excited about. And these are two metals that sit sort of in opposite sides of sort of the macro discussion. One's much more attached to real yields. The other is more attached to the macro reflationary narrative, but both could start moving higher. So, you know, here, let me show you a chart that's going to help you uh, with a few different understandings about yields. You can go to TradingView and pull up uh, the TNX note yield. If real yields are dropping, what does that actually mean? This is not complicated. You don't have to calculate this on your own. You can pull this up from a number of sites, but real yield is the nominal yield of a bond minus the rate of inflation. And you do not have to calculate that on your own, but know this, if inflation is slightly creeping higher to flat, okay, and yields are dropping, that means we're gonna have a lower real yield. That's going to allow gold to move higher. So if you're wondering, did the TNX moving lower help gold higher? Through the calculation of real yields being the nominal yield of a bond minus the rate infl of inflation, yes, it absolutely did. And so let me give you another look at this via some cool data. This is FRED data. And this shows you the wonderfully consistent inverse relationship and here's that 10 year all over again right here and your gold fixing price which is the london close look at the inverse relationship all i need are, are is that 10 year to flatten out and as long as inflation's creeping higher or staying flat real yields are not getting any larger so as they flatten or move lower gold will move higher it's an inverse or negative relationship. And so that's why you need to keep an eye on bonds and inflation when understanding when and how gold is finally breaking out. All right. So I hope that helps. These are two markets that we've been very involved in. And as these markets continue higher, the knock on effect is more uh, long position in miners, more long position in, in gold miners, not just miners like XME and GDX, but uh, we can start to look even more granularly down to the individual stocks. Okay, hope that helps. Uh, it's something that a lot of traders are not aware of, which is the relationship between gold and real yields. And, and remember, you can look long copper and you can look long gold. And in the premium video, I'll, I'll dive a little bit into the copper gold uh, relationship and, and something that Jeffrey Gunluck and Dumb Double Line had talked about in the past as far as the relationship back to bonds uh, to better tie these narratives. It's very interesting, copper gold ratio and uh, what that says about treasury yields. I'll see you in the next update. Without simpler trading, I could not have financial independence. This is one of the best investments I ever made in my life. It's helping me find consistency. It's one of the things that won me 